Hello, and welcome. I'm Zyndir, here we are once again playing Resonated Eyes. Now, you'll notice I've got some uh, conduits here. I made these out of the sheer fact that it would make things far, far simpler. Now, if you remember, we got that pulsating iron. I made one set of empowered item conduits, which was made from three of the pulsating iron and conduit binders. Conduit binders, you get four at a time out of binder composite, which is made from clay, sand, and gravel which you get eight per craft, so you basically get roughly half a stack of bonduit, conduit binder uh, per craft. So that's pretty good. Now, I've set this up, so this will, I had other ores in here, and then I had to change it to uh, the empowered, because if you look here, this is the regular item conduit. It's only got five on its filter, whereas if you look at, oh, by the way, the cool thing about Ender IO conduits you can uh, put different types in the same thing. So I have items and power going through the same line, which these are just, uh, well, let's break this one. Be easier to show you if I can just press R on it. It's made with conductive iron and conduit binder. Conductive iron is made with the uh, alloy smelter in alloy mode. This is the big reason why I made the alloy smelter. Now, it takes a thousand Minecraft jewels or 10,000 RF and it takes two redstone and a piece of iron. So, it's not terribly expensive, and their transfer rate, let me just look this up real quick for you. Their transfer rate is 1,280 RF a tick, or 128 Minecraft jewels, and that is the lowest tier. That is pretty good. Uh, now, I had to... As you can see, if you right-click on these things, you can change them between separate modes, which I have that one on insert. This is a gold chest. If you've seen my 147 series, you should know about this. And, uh, that's pretty much it. It wasn't 147 Resonant Rise, though. It was, uh, Feed the Beast. Now, if you notice, I just right-clicked that. I lost a heart. But now, it is bound to me. That's not terribly useful to me at the moment. But it can be in the future. However, things I wish to do now, which I went and did some more mining, found 31 diamonds. However, this is only the icing on the cake of what I'm going to make. Because I'm going to make something that is going to make all of my troubles go away. Yes, it really is that powerful. It is the digital miner. It is not cheap to make, taking atomic cores, obsidian dust, and all of that. However, we have this cool little stuff here, which it's going to take seven, and I believe I'm going to need eight pieces of iron, because I'm pretty sure the mechanism tools, yeah, the mechanism steel tools take uh, steel as the hilt. Now, the reason why I'm doing this I probably have these in the wrong order. I pretty much always do. Okay, I give up. What is the proper configuration? Axe, shovel, pick, iron, steel paxel. Uh, by the way, I completely used up my Orch uh not the sword, the pickaxe. But there's a very good reason why I've acquired this paxel. And let me just, I don't need this, actually, I'll use this bucket of, well, no, I want to make sure I have a bucket of lava around. I'm going to throw him there. I want to acquire some water, like so, and uh, we're going to need a pool of obsidian, well, pool of lava to make into obsidian. Go away, spider. So, I'm going to go over to that lava pool that we went to before when I in order to get this original bucket, and I'll see you there. So, here we are, a pool of lava. Now, I clearly didn't make a diamond pickaxe, although I could have very easily. However, steel tools from both Tinker's Construct, Mechanism, I don't know about the other ones, they can apparently mine obsidian at a pretty good rate, as you can tell. Now, in order to get obsidian dust, Yes, I'm going to backtrack through something we haven't even made yet. Oops. 
Now, as you can see, if we use a sag mill, we get four dust. If we use a rock crusher, we get crushed obsidian and a chance of dust, and then we basically barely get one dust out of it. Bees. And unfortunately, that's only tracking the one kind of obsidian dust. So if we look through Mechanism's Dirty Obsidian Dust, we get two per obsidian. Now, there is a way to get more dust out of it. Uh, the downside to that is it's beyond our reach. It is way ahead of us in machinery. We haven't even really gotten machinery. We've created one machine and found one machine. So that's the goal of this episode, though, to resolve our lack of machines. Now, since I don't feel like making a sag mill at the moment, I am going to need twice as many of this as I originally would. So instead of needing, say, let me just run the numbers through my head real quick. Instead of needing 22, not, not obsidian ore, it takes, oh, ow, 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 fine, be that way, don't let me swim out of it. Uh, okay. Can this mine it too? Of course not. So instead of needing 24 obsidian dust, which in this case is going to cost us 12 obsidian, technically we only need 22. Two will be left over. Uh, however, I don't really care about that. I just consider it 24. So in order to get that, we're going to need twice as well, not twice as much obsidian. Well, yeah, yeah, twice as much obsidian. So instead of needing six, we need twelve. And I realize I'm basically just standing here mining obsidian, describing this, and I'm up to twenty. Oh. Okay. This is another cool thing about the Paxels. I'm sure you noticed the Paxel is made with all of the different tools: pick, shovel, and axe. That is because it functions as all of them. Yeah, it doesn't have as much durability as all three of them, but it has enough durability that it doesn't matter too much. Just think about it. How often are you going through picks, but not quite so much shovels or axes? This basically gives you some extra durability if you use primarily a pick, while making it so you can still go through those small patches of dirt that you normally would switch to a shovel for. A shovel that would last you ages. So, I realized, well, first of all, as you can tell, it does mine through this obsidian quite quick. Faster than, I believe, a standard diamond pickaxe, because I believe a standard diamond pickaxe is about 15 seconds with no upgrades. And, yeah, cut through that pretty quick. But I'm going to meet you back over at the uh, establishment in the bottom of the castle, and we'll continue this endeavor. Okay, and here we are. We are back at the uh, castle base. I don't really intend to stay here, but I'm probably going to. So I'm going to need 12 for sure. That'll get me 24. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, this is that chest I found over there, which, as you can tell, I've cleaned that out quite well. Uh, that wall I started building here is gone because I went through and I torched this up. I encountered some resistance that was no match for my lava bucket. And this is basically a throne room, but there is nothing here. However, if we look through here, bad things. And... I've decided we're not well equipped enough for that, so I'm going to actively avoid that. Because, yeah. I made an Osmium pickaxe, but I'm not sure how much I need it. Look at this thing. I looked at this on the way over. This thing has 11 attack damage. Makes me wonder what the highest tier of Paxel has. 13. That also has 13. Interesting. Although, I'm not sure it might take uh, double durability, or even possibly more, in order to achieve what we're after. Now, the dust is in here. However, we're now missing 
some very core machines for mechanism, one of which being this. So I'm going to hope uh, convert some of the comatite because it's not really useful to me. Well, I mean, it's useful, but... And if you didn't see what I did there, uh, I'll just grab this because I'm not going to use it. I'll show you. If you take any of the underground biomes cobble and put it in a square like that, you'll get an equivalent amount of cobble back out, regular Minecraft cobble. So if you have underground biomes in, you don't know about that, that is a good way to solve any potential issues with not having real cobble. I learned that from watching Kieran Dave, who is the creator of the Resident Rise mod pack, and uh, I suggest you should go watch him. I watch him myself, personally, so... But, as I said, he is the creator of the Resident Rise mod pack, and he deserves the attention he... Because there's a lot of work that goes into maintaining this. So, we need a piece of obsidian. Just grab all the redstone. Oh, what am I missing? Iron. Of course. So I've got quite a bit of iron now, if you hadn't noticed. And part of the reason I set this up is because I knew I was going to need to expand further. And I filled these pretty well through, so I shouldn't need to fill them too soon. Now, this is going to burn through a lot of this, but I'm going to need pretty much all of this. So while that's going, we need to make some other machines, one of which is the Osmium Compressor, which requires what we're making now. As you can see, not that one. The control circuit is made from enriched alloy and redstone. Enriched alloy is made from redstone and iron in the metallurgic infuser. We're also going to need a steel casing, and while I'm here, not you, uh, I do kind of want a precision sawmill, but I'm looking for the crusher. There it is. It's also a steel casing, but it needs two lava buckets. Crap. Okay. We'll get around to that. First, let's take the steel and two osmium. So this is how you make a steel casing. Oops, not like that. There we go. Now this should be through, yes, yeah, through quite a bit of them. We'll make our control circuits. And I'm going to need glass. Well, conveniently, I made a Paxel, and conveniently, this Paxel is very fast. And there happens to also be sand just outside of where I'm at. There we go. So, I'm not actively using this, which is a good thing. If you put it on alloy mode, it'll give you special glass provided by uh, Ender.io which is kind of like the clear glass from Tinker's Construct, but I don't believe that will work in this recipe. Notice how the glass isn't changing over. So that glass should end up over here, and now we should have enough for the Osmium Compressor. Now the Osmium Compressor, while a good machine to have, is basically worthless to us at the moment. The reason for it being worthless is because while it does have some uses, as you can see you can make glowstone ingots as well, you need obsidian ingots. In order to make obsidian ingots, you need refined obsidian dust, which is diamond dust and obsidian dust. Now, one diamond dust will do eight obsidian dust worth of refined. But in order to get diamond dust, you need a crusher, which unfortunately means that I need to go get two buckets of lava. Oh. Mm -hmm iron in my inventory. I knew that. Uh, I don't believe it consumes the buckets, but just in case. Now, I don't think I ran into any lava when I was down underneath. As you can see, I dug a bit of a mine shaft here. Well, there was one thing of lava. Uh, not that way. There was... As you can see, mine shaft. No... I've already lost myself. Here we go. Here's one thing of lava over here. And I don't believe I ran into another one at all. Yeah. 
I stopped there because I dug some and it didn't continue out. As you can tell, I'm leaving a large majority of the ores down here. Ooh, I didn't light this up. And that's because it's not really going to be an issue soon enough. Where can I find some lava? Unfortunately, the underground mode on Map Writer is terrible. Although I believe I've said this before. Now, I came down the whole way to Y level 7. And I dug some pretty long tunnels. Like, this one goes on for a long time. Unfortunately, I haven't run into anything other than poison from Biomes of Plenty. Look how much faster the Paxil is. Now, this is a terrible way of doing this. I'll tell you what, I'm going to find a source of lava that's not the whole way over in the volcano biome. And as you can see, here's some poison. And, uh, I'll meet back up with you. Almost back up. Jumping is terrible. I either need to get stairs or some kind of step assist. I unfortunately don't think the, uh, the free runners from Mechanism... Actually, they might give step assist. However, I would need to come up with a way to charge them. They're not terribly difficult, though. That might look a little daunting, but... Don't worry about it. It's actually really simple. So it didn't take me anywhere near as long to find lava as it could have. Because I basically stopped recording, ran down the tunnel, and listened for the bubbling noises of lava, and then dug towards it. Uh, oh, what am I missing? Steel casing. Oh. I bet the uh, buckets of lava don't process. Uh, they have crazy little metadata and stuff, and there's, there's something I can do about that, but you know, unfortunately I need to wait for that to finish now. But, if we grab ourselves a diamond, let's throw it in here. Now, I did end up with 30-something diamonds in my little mining expedition, so this doesn't hurt quite as much as it could have. I'm used to barely having enough diamonds to do this. Not, you know, end up rolling and tons of diamonds. So, there is that. Throw that in there, that should get it processed. Now, I am going to need to go through a bunch of things, but luckily I have, it takes, I think, 10 steel total in order to make the digital miner. Uh, oddly enough, the robot is about as expensive as the digital miner itself. Now, I'm glad I found some lapis, because unfortunately, in previous playthroughs of this I've done, lapis was one of the hardest things for me to find. Uh, yeah, surprisingly. But, as you can tell, it takes osmium dust, which is why I have some in here that is unprocessed. There's also diamonds. Now, in order to make sure I don't over-diamond... I'm going to do that, and as such, this will make seven. Now, I want two more diamonds, some lapis and some redstone. That may not be enough lapis. Oh, oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, gold. Forgot gold. You'd think, I, I've actually made quite a few of these, like... Ever since I found out about them, the first thing I've done is rush them in every world. Imagine a quarry that doesn't leave the largest world holes. That only pulls out the ores. That is the digital miner. You know what? I... Uh, I could make a crafting bench. Deck with it. I'm um, sitting and you can go in there for now. So. We're gonna need three of these. Should I take that back? Gonna need a fourth one. Going to need... Let's just grab all the glass, all the steel. That's gonna spit it out if I do that. Uh, I should only need one osmium at this point. My memory serves. We're gonna need a steel casing. We're going to need... 
Oh. Making mistakes again. Oh. I need two chests. That one there, that one there. Piece of glass. Five steel. And where'd you go? A control circuit. That gets us that. Now, in order to do the robot, we unfortunately need this machine. Now, we need to wait for it to finish its little process there. So, let's have a look-see. Right. So, let's grab me some iron, because I threw it back in here like an idiot. I should have enough stuff on me. So, we're going to want to make two pistons. Sounds like the machine finished. So we'll go visit that thing in a second. Piston there. Control circuit there. Iron there. Logistical sorters. These do not stack, unfortunately. So now that this thing is done, we can take our diamond dust. And as you can see over here, it says 80. So what we can do now is we'll take 8 dust. We'll throw it in there. We only need two ingots, but it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, good, good. So, get six of this. Now, if we open up the robot, here is the energy tablets. As you can see, they're not difficult. Not at all. Oh, right. I'm going to need those. Now, here's why we needed the osmium compressor. I'll just throw eight in there. Uh, I can actually set this to auto eject. And I'll just set this to dark red. And as you can see, it's going to grab those automatically. The sounds from these are a bit loud. At least I think so. Okay, so. This goes there, this goes there, that goes there, there, electrical steel, one of those goes in there, and then a steel ingot, and that gets us a robot. Now these things, they act as an enchanting table, I think, uh, an anvil for sure, they have storage space, and a crafting grid, but I don't want one of those at the moment, I want to make that. So we should have everything I need for it now. Now, these things, they take quite a bit of power. Far more than my measly little establishment here can provide. So, I don't really have a good way to go about handling it either. Now there's different types of generators and stuff I could use. I'm probably just gonna try and run it off of this. There is a way I can do it, but it's going to be very costly on my resources. The reason why, and you'll see in a second, I'm crushing this back down into its dust. So we'll take these obsidian ingots. There's another thing from this mod that I want, which is the atomic disassembler. It holds 400,000 RF. It does 10 hearts of damage, so it one-shots most mobs. It's not very hard to make, but unfortunately that 400,000 RF, I did the math at one point, it's only like 500 or so uses. So unfortunately, it it's hard to maintain unless, I, I keep on relying on thermal expansion to deal with it. So if we take these, okay, you know what, I'm just going to convert this. If you take a crafting bench, put it in here, you get a crafting station, which won't spit out your items. I actually showed this before now that I think about it. But, this is how you make the energy upgrades. Now, if I put this here for a second, this guy takes up a 3x3 three three space. However, he is hooked into the power now. He's going to be pulling it in. He holds 40,000 right now, and as you can see, he takes 80 RF attack. If I throw these in here, it'll slowly start to reduce that, and as maximum power you can hold will go up. Now once we get 80 of these in here, it'll be a lot more manageable. It'll be slow, but it'll be manageable. 
Now, the cool thing about this guy is, as you can see, he has an auto-eject option. He can silk touch. You can actually uh, put a block here and replace blocks you take out of the world with it. So you could use it as sort of a, a, a wand of equal trade from uh, Thomcraft, sort of. Except he can silk touch the blocks he's picking up too. So if you're replacing something, you don't want to destroy but as you can see, he only uses 8 RF a tick now, which is less than 2 of these combined. But, he doesn't have a configuration. However, you can change that as you will. Now, normally I only set this to like 80 or so, just a little bit higher. It has an inverse mode, so you can specify the things you don't want to mine. But, in this case, say I want diamond. I can enter in the OR dictionary reference for diamond... Click the checkbox, and you'll see the ore shows up here. Now, if that's all I have in there, as you can see, I set the radius to 32. So it'll do a 60, well, technically a 65 by 65 area, because the radius is outside of himself, as far as I can tell. We'll start that, and as you can see, there's 168 blocks to mine. But the speed is kind of slow. That's what the speed upgrades are for. Now, once you've got it fully upgraded with both speed and energy... It'll be pretty fast, but it will also take 80 Minecraft jewels a tick, or 800 RF. Unfortunately, we have to deal with the 8 we have now. I could make some speed upgrades. They're made identical to energy upgrades, except for you use Osmium Dust in their place. So, there's nothing in here. And as you can see... Right. So, we have two leftover dirty obsidian dust that I'm not going to do anything with. And I really should make use of that at some point but that's not going to do any good here. I do want to eventually move down into this sludge pit. Uh, what is that awkward blue area? Oh, uh, that looks like it's... Okay, yeah, some of the ominous woods bled over. Oh, oh it's raining. I'll sleep the rain off then. I was going to go to the Ominous Woods and show you at night what it's like. I mean, we had seen part of an idea, but... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this good for now. I'm going to very quickly overload this if I try and do this. Uh, oh, you know what we can do? I can now upgrade it. That's right. We can move up to a diamond chest. Oh, and if you're curious how I moved these things over here, I actually used a nifty little tool from Java. It allows you to... Let's grab one that's unimportant. Pick it up. But as you can see, it gives you slowness too and mining fatigue too. And that's how I moved these over here. Uh, later on, if I make a precision sawmill and cut down wood... Precision sawmill is, if, if you saw it, another mechanism tool, or machine. It uh, creates, you know planks and stuff and whatnot, but it outputs sawdust. Now, if I can find the sawdust... Fucking... Here we go. You can make a cardboard box. And what you can do with a cardboard box is you can place it over something. It's not necessary for the mechanism machines, as you saw. We can pick them up. They'll maintain everything. But you can put it on, like, boxes, furnaces... You know, stuff that you normally can't move. Now, there is a few blacklisted items, because they cause really bad crashes. However, they are currently enabled for spawners. Which means, yes, you can pick up and move monster spawners with cardboard boxes. Not that it really matters, because there's the force wrench from Darkcraft as well. That's just as simple to pick up spawners with. So, it really doesn't matter. The difference is making an entire machine versus making uh, a small wrench and then charging it some. But I think that's going to be it for now. As you can see, I'm only getting diamonds, and I can go into here. I can put, you know, or gold. Now, you can do things, like, for example, if I were to put iron and then an asterisk for a wild card it's going to look for iron as you can see it still shows up there now I don't 
actively need Osmium at this exact second. Although, I am probably going to want some redstone. Well, that's something I'd rather do on its own, because it's going to clog up my filter, or the, the machine, really hard. Although, what I can do, if I take the crescent wrench that I got out of that chest that was back there, turn this sideways, that's going to be a bit unpleasant. I'll just do it this way. The reason why I'm doing it uh, this way is because I want to be able to open the chest. So if I set this to an insert, and I set this to an extract, it should now pull everything out into this chest. Now, I could turn it sideways and run ores down into this chest, and then they would get processed. Although, as you can see, we have a lot of ores to mine. I'm going to do all this good for now. I'm going to have to figure out a way to deal with the sorting and a uh, way of holding all these different things. I may actually go make some Java barrels. Uh, I'll show you that real quick in case I do. They're very similar to the barrels from factorization, except they have a chest in the center. They're also ore dictionary. So if I say put, you know, uh, say I put in this type of copper... I can then right click on it with this type and it'll convert all of it to this type. So that is a very, very handy feature of them. And I might end up doing that and then just move everything with cardboard boxes once we're ready to escape this place. But for now, I am probably going to work on making more obsidian ingots so I can make some armor. Now, as you can see, there's also a teleporter, which is nifty. But this armor, it may not look like much. But while it lasts, it protects you almost entirely from damage. Things that will still get you are poison, fire, and wither. Because those are functions that ignore armor. But, I'm drawing this out too long. I'm going to stop for now. I'm going to call this good here, and I will see you guys later. Have a good day.